In part one of this video series, I introduced you to the Cartesian brand of loudspeaker drivers and the two-way floor standard bolt that I'm doing using a 28mm tweeter and a 165mm woofer from this brand. Click the card top right or the link in the description below to go watch that video. In this video part two, we will be building the enclosures. In part three, I will finish the enclosures, make the crossover and test the speaker. So make sure not to miss out on this by subscribing and ringing the notification bell to be notified when that video comes out. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm starting the build by preparing all the parts I need. The main enclosure is made from 15 millimeter or five eight inch birch plywood. This inside of the enclosure is clad with 6mm or quarter inch MDF, but more on this a little bit later. The speaker enclosure slants back with approximately 5 degrees and this is cut on the miter saw. The slot port panels are rounded over on one short edge on the router table with a round over bit to allow for better airflow through the port. I am doubling up and strengthening the area behind the port with an additional 15mm birch plywood panel.
I will be releasing build plans for these speakers, but that will only be during part three. So again, subscribe and ring that notification bell and make sure not to miss that. You can also go to my website, soundlab.net, where you will find build plans to most of the other projects I have done on this channel. Before we continue, let me tell you more about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. If you're a creator who wants to explore new skills, deepen some of those existing passions and get lost in creativity, Skillshare is for you. Topics on Skillshare range from animation, creative writing, film and video, fine arts, graphic design, illustration, music, photography, web development and so many more. One of the classes that I recently took, Acoustics 101, is by Marius Tanasescu on the subject of speaker design basics and enclosure design. This is a great class for the beginner DIY audio enthusiast or audiophile wanting to learn more about sound waves and speaker design and I highly recommend it. Another class I thoroughly enjoyed is by Timmy Coker on digital poster design. I found this class and Timmy's intimate approach to design very inspiring. Classes are curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. A yearly subscription is less than $10 per month and the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So go check it out now. As mentioned earlier, I am using 6mm or quarter inch MDF to clad the inside of the enclosure and thus thickening the enclosure walls. Using different types of material in the construction also helps to dampen the enclosure more since different types of materials will resonate at different frequencies and hopefully reduce resonance over a wider frequency range. It also makes the construction a little bit easier. The front baffle are two pieces of 12mm or half inch MDF glued together to provide a solid foundation for the woofer to operate in. The baffle is also cut slightly oversized so that I can clamp it to the enclosure and use a trim router with flush trim bit to cut it to the required size and fit perfectly on the front of the enclosure. On the back of the baffle, I cut a rebate around the perimeter so that it will register and fit into the front of the enclosure. This will ensure that we have larger glue area to secure the baffle to the enclosure without any air leaks. With the baffle test fitted in place, I can mark out the positions for the tweeter and woofer before using the router to cut out the holes.
To allow the back of the woofer to have adequate airflow when mounted in the baffle, we must use a 45 degree beveling router bit to bevel the inside edge of the mounting hole. I used my trim router for this and in hindsight my suggestion would be to do this step before cutting the rebates around the perimeter of the baffle so that the router has enough surface to glide on. The next step is to cut 12mm or half inch under carpet felt and glue it with regular PVA wood glue onto the inside panels of the enclosure. This will aid in dampening the panels and also help to prevent standing waves from forming inside the enclosure. I am only applying this to the side panels, top panel and back panel. In addition to that I use polyester batting in the bottom and top of the enclosure and also just behind the woofer. We don't want to overfill the cabinet since we want this woofer to have an unobstructed airflow through the enclosure and the port. Now I am drilling holes in the front of the baffle to secure it to the enclosure. This is only so that I can use this first enclosure I built to do the test measurements and then later still have access to the inside if I need to and to apply a final finish to the baffle. I later filled all the holes and the baffle will eventually be painted and glued onto the front of the enclosure. Uh, but this is where I will leave it for this week. Next time in the final part 3, I will continue to finish the enclosure model and build the crossover and then we can do a sound demo. In the meantime, a huge thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. It makes these projects possible. Uh, please consider to support my channel since I provide more behind the scenes updates on my projects every two or three weeks or so and also discounts to my bolt plans. Uh, links in the description. Uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe, ring the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up and until next time, adios.